In this video, we'll talk about the peripheral, the real-time clock and calendar, or RTCC, which is timekeeping on the order of uh, more of a human scale, like a watch. <clears throat> so that means that we'll keep track of uh, time in terms of hours, minutes, and seconds. We'll also know the day, the year, uh, the day of the week and the month, so anything that you would expect from more of a calendar system. We do this by using a secondary oscillator. One that's specifically timed to keep track of this level of time. So it's not nearly as fast as like the 48 megahertz of uh, the pick itself. Instead, it's going to use a clock source with a very specific frequency of 32.768, is that right? Yep, kilohertz, which is very specific, uh, uh, strangely like uh, binary. So um, half of a 16, uh, half of a 16 bit number. So something about this frequency counted up a thousand times gets you exactly uh, one second or something. Um, so it's a very specific frequency. Um, some microcontrollers have this built in, uh, our PIC does not, so we have to use uh, an external crystal resonator. Similar to how we're getting uh, the 48 megahertz on the PIC by using an 8 megahertz external crystal resonator, here we're going to be using a 32 kilohertz crystal resonator to the secondary oscillator pins which are uh, S-O-S-C-O uh, and S-O-S-C-I. The downside to these pins is that this happens to be A4 and this happens to be B4. Those are the pins that I've recommended using uh, uh, a user LED and a user button for, so you'll have to move those pins uh, somewhere else so that we can use the secondary oscillator here. And the connection is directly to this resonator, which is usually drawn as some kind of weird little box that looks like this, and this is the 32 kilohertz chip. We'll look at the data sheet in a minute. Um, the downside to using this kind of resonator as opposed to the one that we used for the 8 megahertz, the 8 megahertz had something built in called load capacitors. Here, these are not built in, so we have to add a capacitor from each pin to ground. So these are the load capacitors. And the reason why these are necessary is that there's a circuit inside of the PIC that um, is going to ping one side of this resonator and then the other side will output a sine wave uh, and it will resonate at this very specific frequency. Um, the capacitors are there to uh, make sure that we resonate at the right frequency using the right amount of power. Um, and this particular chip that I supplied in the kit wants 12 picofarad caps but I didn't put those in the kit. Instead, I only put 10 pico caps, and 10 isn't enough. So you'll have to use 20 picofarads here. So put two of the 10 picofarads um, in parallel to get 20 picofarads. This is a little too much capacitance, so sometimes the uh, resonator doesn't start or will randomly just stop. I'll show you a little hands-on demo to how to get it start going again. Um, this is really not the kind of circuit you want to build on a breadboard. The breadboard has too much stray capacitance and noise going on. Um, so this will work for a short demo. In uh, real life, you would, you would have to make a printed circuit board with much better controlled uh, ground planes and connections that are very short to the pick. It would work beautifully there. So here it might be a little noisy and not work great because we're on the breadboard. Um, so let's take a look at that demo real fast. So uh, up here, I've got the crystal re resonator. It's uh, kind of like a big silver uh, cylinder. And I've got uh, on each pin, uh, 20 picofarads for the load capacitors. And then um, on my display, I'm uh, printing a number uh, that's incrementing uh, twice a second, so I just know that my code is updating. And then I'm printing my time and my date. Um, and the thing is, every time we lose power, we lose what time it is. So I will kill the power and put the power back on, and it goes back to the original time and date that I put into my code. So uh, this microcontroller does not have 
um, or at least we're not using, an external battery that powers only the RTCC uh, peripheral so that the time is never lost and will always keep ticking. Um, that would be nice so that you only had to program time once and it would then remember it forever. Here, every time we kill the power, we're going to start the time over again. Um, so a, a nice exercise for you, the user, would be to write um, a new function that lets you push buttons to uh, change the time. But let's just pretend that this is the time. And we can see that I have hours, minutes, and seconds, and we're ticking in seconds. Uh, we know that today is Wednesday, May 27th in 2020. And this, uh, according to the day sheet, is good for the next 100 years. So uh, it would be able to predict the, the, the correct month and day uh, for 100 years without having to have some software program to it. So the time is stored uh, in a little bit of a weird way inside of the microcontroller. It uses something called BCD, binary uh, coded decimal, uh, to know the time. So it's not storing the time as like one specific number. It's broken up uh, the time into characters, and then every character has to be recombined to build our time. So let's do an example. Let's say that it's uh, 2 o'clock, and this is all in 24-hour time or military time. So 2 o'clock means that it would be uh, 14, and I'm just going to invent a time here, uh, 21 minutes and 45 seconds. So let's say that's what time it is right now. So BCD says that the 1 is stored individually, the 4 is stored individually, the 2 is stored individually, the 1, the 4, and the 5. So it's not stored as 14 and 21. It's stored as uh, six different numbers that you have to build back together to get the time. Now this automatically ticks uh, properly. So every second this number goes up and up and up and th these numbers go up. So you don't have to worry about any of that. It's just that storing this time into a variable is a little weird. Stored as BCD. Um, so uh, how do we refer to these uh, characters in here? This is called the hour character, HR10, because it's uh, like the tenth digit. And then this character would be HR01. And then this is the minute character, 10. And then this one is the minute character, 01. And so on. So each of these uh, six digits has its own placeholder in memory and we can pull it out of uh, memory by knowing those names. Uh, the PIC stores the time in a special function register called RTC time. So that's an unsigned 32-bit number. And it stores it in kind of a, a nice way so that we can update the time simultaneously uh, without having to go in and change each of these fields um, we can just put it into one big hex number. So I could put this as 0x, and uh, to set this time, it would be 14, 21, 45, uh, 0, 0. And 0, 0 there because we just have more bits that are necessary. Uh, a date can be stored similarly. So RTC date, which has similar fields for the year, month, and day, uh, can be stored with uh, first of the year, 20. So we're not doing the 20, 20 part of 20. This is just the second two digits. Um, then the month. So we're in May. So that's the fifth month. Uh, then the date, the 27th. And then the last two characters represent the day of the week. Uh, the first day of the week being zero is Sunday. So uh, today's Wednesday. So uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday should be zero, three. So this represents uh, a time and a date. So here is the year, here is the month, here is the day, this is the uh, day of the week, here is um, hour, here is minute, here is second, and then these are always zero. Um, let's take a look at uh, what this uh, chip looks like and some sample code. So here is the link on DigiKey to the 32 kilohertz crystal that I provided. And it clearly states that you should have 12.5 uh, picofarad caps. Um, I wasn't paying very close attention when I built your kit, so uh, we don't have exactly the right capacitors there. Here's the oscillator section of the uh, family reference manual for the PIC. Uh, and so up here we can see the primary oscillator, and this is where we put our uh, eight megahertz crystal that got turned into 48 megahertz using postscalers. 
And down here it's showing the secondary oscillator, which are two more pins. Um, and this one's only really used for 32 kilohertz. There's no other reason to use the secondary oscillator. It doesn't have any other frequencies available. Um, and there are other types of circuits that can generate the 32 kilohertz that are not the crystal resonator that I provided, which are probably more accurate um, and uh, less futzy when they're in a breadboard. Um, but that's what we have. Um, the secondary oscillator pins uh, are down here, SOSCI and SOSCO, uh, right below the regular oscillator pins. Um, unfortunately, we were using B4 and A4 for our user LED and buttons, so you have to move those. I moved them over to, to some B pins over here. Um, here's taking a look at the uh, RTCC uh, chapter of the Family Reference Manual. And for instance, here is the RTC time special function register, where we can see here's where the uh, first digit of the hour is stored, and here's where the second digit of the hour is stored. There's only two bits for uh, this hour because uh, we basically uh, only need 0, 1, and 2, uh, whereas we need more bits to store um, the other possible second digits for the hour. And then we have minute and we have second. And if we go down, we can see how the date works as well, just a couple more bits. Um, one thing you might want to check is the weekday. Um, let's see, it doesn't specifically say, but uh, zero is Sunday and six is Saturday. So one weird thing to note here is that there's a RTC write enable bit, um, and that is a strange bit. So it says only when this is a one are you allowed to change the date and time. And you're not allowed to set that bit like a normal bit. So when doing the initialization, we'll have a, a little bit more complicated initialization for that bit than we'll have for other special function registers when we set them up. So the first thing we have to do when we're setting up uh, to use the RTCC is that we have to enable the secondary oscillator. And I think by default, we were turning it off. Uh, probably the reason to do that is it saves power. Um, so now we have to make sure that that's on. So in the dev config bits, which are the special special function registers, uh, and in this code we're using pound pragmas at the top of our C file to specify the values of those bits, um, make sure that you turn on the secondary oscillator, because of course none of this code will work if the oscillator is killed immediately by the pound pragma. So the first thing you should do is be sure to turn that on. And then on GitHub, I've provided um, a header file and a C file that kind of do the initialization and, and store some variables for you. So there's a setup function and it takes the hex number of time and the hex number of date that you would like to initialize to. And then I'm providing a structure called RTCC time um, that is basically a copy of RTC date and RTC time just put into one structure so that you can store the characters for the date and time. And then I also provided a function that tells you, based on uh, this weak uh, 0 to 6 number, uh, sends back the letters in a character array so you know what the day of the week is. So here's the day of the week uh, array with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And I was fooling around, and I just, I just added a dot at the end of these so that it knew um, when to stop copying characters over. And it adds a null character at the very end so that the sprintf function uh, knows to stop adding more characters when you kind of take the week and use uh, sprintf with a percent %s to generate the name of the day of the week. So here's the setup function. Um, the first thing we will do is we'll turn on uh, the secondary clock. And uh, then we have to wait for it to be ready. Um, then to be allowed to change what time it is in RTCC, we, uh, we have to do something called an unlock sequence uh, at the CPU. Um, so we're going to change this value of syskey, so we're going to make sure we're locked. Then we will do this unlock sequence so that now we're allowed to change the right bit, and now we are actually allowed to update the time. Um, so now we will turn the, the clock off so we're not ticking. We can update the date and time, and we'll turn the clock back on, and we'll wait for um, uh, everything to start rolling again. Oh, and here's a debug statement I had before. We'll just get rid of that. So when you call this, you will have uh, sent a, uh, a date and a time. And so now the clock will start counting. And then to read, um, here's a blank function. And you, you can figure out what you want to do here to figure out what time it is and return something of the structure RTCC time. So let's look at uh, the example one more time. Um, I've noticed that sometimes the clock doesn't kind of kick on. So if I were to kill my power 
and turn it back on. Um, occasionally we'll get stuck in the setup function in one of the while loops that says, is the clock ready? And if it's not, and I just kind of like touch these capacitors or, or the crystal itself, and that usually kicks it on. So occasionally you might see that this doesn't update, uh, and that's because the clock will have started, but will have randomly stopped. Um, it happens, I don't know, it depends on humidity and something weird. Um, so just if you if you notice things are stuck, just kind of tap around here. That'll get the clock back going again. That shouldn't happen if you're on a nice printed circuit board. It's really related to this being a breadboard and being a little finicky to noise. So for your demo, uh, what I like to see is print something that's updating, say, twice a second so that we can see that the code is running, and then print the date and time. Uh, note that this is military time, so if you want, you can try to figure out if this number is bigger than 12. You can switch to PM or something where you can just leave it military time. Um, and now we've got a nice little uh, watch-like circuit. The other thing that this uh, peripheral can do that we didn't cover was that it can uh, set an alarm, and one of the pins on the pick can uh, go high when the alarm is met or generate an interrupt. So we can also turn this into something like a, uh, an alarm clock that you could put by your bed, uh, which would be kind of neat. So we'll, we'll talk about that maybe as a future final project for the class.